Perry Mason is an American drama television series created by Roland Jones and Ron Fitzgerald for HBO. It is based on the character of the same name by Earl Stanley Gardner. The series stars Matthew Rhys in the title role. In July 2020, HBO renewed the series for a second season, and in April 2021 it was announced that Jones and Fitzgerald left the series and were replaced by showrunners Jack Mill and Michael Begler. The second season premiered on March 6, 2023. The second season picks up months after the Dodson case has come to an end. The scion of a powerful oil family is brutally murdered. When the DA goes into the city's Hooverville's, a poor makeshift town, to pinpoint the most obvious of suspects, Perry, Della and Paul find themselves at the centre of a case that will uncover reaching conspiracies and force them to reckon with what it truly means to be guilty. The cast includes Matthew Reese as Perry Mason, a defence attorney, running a practice with his partner Della Street. Juliet Rylands as Della Street, Mason's partner and apprentice in the legal practice. Chris Chalk as Paul Drake, a private investigator for Street and Mason's practice. Shea Wiggum as Pete Strickland, Mason's former work partner and now a private investigator for the prosecutors. Justin Kirk as Hamilton Berger, the new district attorney of Los Angeles. Eric Lang as Eugene Holcomb, an LAPD homicide detective who runs an illegal casino now on a ship. Catherine Waterson as Jeannie Ames, an optimistic school teacher of Perry's son, Teddy, who later forms a relationship with Perry. Tyra Kilpatrick as Clara Drake, Paul's wife. Tommy Dewey as Brooks McCutcheon, a wealthy oil scion and a philanthropist with a darker side who aspires to bring a baseball team to Los Angeles. Paul Racy as Lydell McCutcheon, Brooks' father, a ruthless businessman who succeeded his empire to his son. Jean Tullock as Anita St. Pierre, a self-made screenwriter that Della meets and is attracted to. Mark O'Brien as Thomas Mulligan, Hamilton Burger's deputy in charge of the Brooks McCutcheon murder case. Fabrizio Gudo as Rafael Gallardo, an 18-year-old Mexican-American artist accused of murdering McCutcheon. Peter Mendoza as Matteo Gallardo, Rafael's unemployed 20-year-old elder brother and an aspiring mechanic who is also accused of murdering McCutcheon. Stephanie Hoston as Sofia Gallardo, Matteo's wife and the mother of the couple's young daughter, Maria. Hope Davis as Camilla Nygaard, a rival of the McCutcheon family in the oil business. Wallace Langham as Melvin Phipps, a Los Angeles native and the attorney of Camilla Nygaard, and Tony Amandis as Judge Durkin, the Gallardo trial judge. Co-showrunner Michael Begler has listed some of the real Los Angeles history that has served as inspiration for the various characters and plotlines during the show's second season. One example that Begler highlighted was the character of Camilla Nygaard, played here by Hope Davis, a piano teacher turned self-made millionaire, who through her early canny investments in oil wells, shares a backstory with the real-life oil baroness Emma McCutcheon Summers, who was born in 1858 and died in 1941. Born in Kentucky, Emma McCutcheon attended the New England Conservatory of Music before getting married and moving to LA with her husband. With an initial $700 she had saved from giving piano lessons, she invested in her first oil well in 1893, and by the early 1900s, having taught herself the oil business, she was known as the oil queen of California. Another example Begler highlighted was the character of Anita St. Pierre, played by Jean Tullock, Della's new girlfriend, who's modelled on Anita Luce, the Hollywood screenwriter who started in the silent era before writing the novel Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and such screenplays as Saratoga and the Woman. Begler said that Brooks McCutcheon's murder was inspired by the simile sensational and still never solved murder of Edward Lawrence Ned Dahoney Jr., the psychon of an oil tycoon implicated in the Teapot Dome scandal. Now, I absolutely loved Perry Mason's season one, and I'm happy to say season two is even better. In this season now, we fully focus on Perry Mason being a defense attorney, and that the show is more focused and spends a lot more time in the courtroom. In the first season of this revival series, Perry Mason begins as a private investigator, and later becomes the attorney, whereas now in this season, the story returns more to its familiar format, as Perry Mason has always been a legal procedural drama. Now, having not watched the original Perry Mason series in the 1960s, this was the first time I was introduced to this fantastic character. So for me, season one really worked well, for some, however, they found it slow and plodding, and we couldn't wait to get to Perry Mason, the attorney, as it were. Now, this show has a terrific cast, and is recreated in the 1930s LA with exacting detail, all set to a moody, nuance-inspired Terry Blanchard score, which I thoroughly enjoyed. With the exception of sometimes the trumpet coming through maybe a bit too strong in the backing soundtrack. Now, initial show creators Jones and Fitzgerald offered a smart new take on the classic characters. So whereas season one was an introduction to this new version, season two really picks up where season one left off perfectly and really now introduces us to the more classic form of Perry Mason. Perry's only slightly less of a mess than he was at the beginning of the first season. Now living in a bachelor apartment, trying to find himself, he's still drinking too much and troubled by the aftermath of the last big case. We are also introduced now to Perry Mason riding a motorcycle. 
He has now an office that he shares with Della Street, and she now acts as his apprentice as he now teaches her to become a full attorney on her own, even though it's really her that's teaching him. The two have shifted away from criminal law into civil work, and Perry finds himself dealing with wills and other dull business that doesn't excite him as much. At the end of the day, Mason didn't get into the business to help the people like Sonny Grace, played by Sean Aston, the penny-pinching owner of a big grocery store, but of course this offers them a lot of money and keeps the practice going. Of course, as later they were introduced to the Galada brothers, the two men accused of killing famous businessman Brooks McCutcheon. And so the story truly begins. New showrunners Jack Mill and Michael Begler are best known for creating The Nick, the Steven Soderbergh directed series centered on the New York Hospital in the earliest days of the 20th century. So I knew when these two men came on board that the show would take a sort of different tone. Season 2 is a lot grander and it really concentrates a lot more on including different aspects of Los Angeles life during the time. We see the most exclusive gatherings of the rich and powerful to the city's poor in Hoovervilles, the home of Rafael and Mateo Gallardo, two Mexican brothers accused of the murder. In later episodes, we learn that there's more than the Great Depression that pushed them into such dire conditions. The neighborhood have been paved over and the residents run off in the name of a new stadium. The Los Angeles of the show is a city in the process of becoming the Los Angeles we all know today. Now, of course, the show's central mystery is compelling, but it's the little attention to details that set the show apart. And each character is layered and nuanced, and you see so much more to their backstory. For example, when Paul is drawn into a case after a frustrating stint of unemployment that leads him and his wife Clara to take up residence in what's home of Clara's brother. His journey brings him to parts of the town Perry and Della can't visit, and leads him to brush up against black power broker who mixes criminal skills and a love of profit with genuine ambitions to improve his neighborhood and empower its residents. Here now, of course, we also see Della, who falls in love with Anita, a sharp-tongued screenwriter, but she is conflicted by her desire for love and the overwhelming prejudices of the day, but also by a long-running cover story in which she and the city's gay district attorney, Hamilton Berger, are seen out and about together. This is a truly fantastic show, one of its wonderful attention to detail in 1930s Los Angeles, its fantastic soundtrack, Magnificent performances from all the leads, and some notable performances here from Hope Davies, Catherine Waterson, and the returning Shia Wiggum, amongst others. Season 2 perfectly picks up where Season 1 left off, and continues in sublime fashion this fantastic historical fiction mystery courtroom drama. Perry Mason, Season 2, gets a 9.5 out of 10.